Even when I was in shape, I competed against the other 100 meter men. Did you ever hear of Jesse Owens? Did you? I can tell you what the back of Jesse Owens looks like better than anyone who ever lived, including his mother. Jesse Owens, the grandson of a slave, would go down in history not only for his incredible athletic achievement, but for his repudiation of Hitler's racial ideas. We were going to go to war. That I did know. And when the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, I was of the age where I would have to go into the service. So I enlisted. I met a young man my age, Bernard, who was from Paris, and he was French. But we were part of the same group training for D-Day. The important thing is that he, he and I became very friendly. Well, it seems in 1938, after Hitler had taken over Czechoslovakia and Austria, the people in France were starting to worry that he was going to take over Paris. And there was a family there. The family was Jewish, and they knew that there'd be severe problems if there if Hitler made it into Paris. So they wanted to be sure the three boys made it through the, the war. Bernard was the oldest of the three that I met in the service. He was not going to land on D-Day, but he was going to land on Omaha Beach a day and a half later. So we trained up until D-Day. And then I guess you saw Saving Private Ryan, that you know what D-Day was like. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. And I feel that surviving that day was the first start of a charmed life, if I really was going to live one. But after the fighting, Bernard landed a day and a half later, we met as I say, in saint Lo, that was a French town where there's a lot of fighting, a lot of casualties. When he said, look, Ed, you're going to Paris, you're going to take Paris, your outfit, under General Bradley, and I want you to do something for me. My parents don't know if I'm alive or dead for the last at least four years. When you get to Paris, they're hiding out. He had told me how to get there because I didn't know Paris at all. And then something happened in my favor. What happened, fortunately, was Eisenhower, being the man he was, thought that it would only be fair to let the French army help us take Paris for diplomatic relations. But being as I was kind of a big shot with the French army, they didn't care what I did. I was really, you know, I was liberating Paris. I was able to get a jeep and go into Paris from the outskirts. So I took the Jeep, I found my way for the first time ever, and he said I would find them up a spiral staircase in this narrow attic sort of thing. And I found him. I knocked on the door and in English, I said, I'm a friend of Bernard's. And they opened the door. And uh, when I told him he was alive, you can't believe how happy they got. You just can't believe it. Because the grandparents were there. So it was their grandson, Tim. 